All right, the round table tonight. We got a lot of stuff that happened this week we got to catch up on. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Uh, Joe Fleming, uh, the outstanding pollster and uh, less pundit, more pollster, and Mike Stenhouse from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity are here tonight to talk about a variety of things in a loosey goosey forum, which I enjoy on Friday nights. We don't have a rundown on Friday evenings. Pardon my wrong glasses. You should know if you watch the show on a regular basis on Fridays that we record the show on Thursday. So if everything blew up on a Friday, we catch up on Monday. But there was enough happening between Monday and Thursday, both nationally and locally, to, to have a little conversation here. Let me remind you about the national conversation amongst so many. Trump plan would raise deductions, lower corporate and small business rates. So why don't we kind of start with that and, uh, and welcome my guests who are no strangers. To the broadcast, Michael. Great to see you. Thanks, Joe, Dan. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Joe. Um, gut check on the Trump tax cut plans. Well, I think when you look at kind of the paltry economic growth our nation's been under, that we do need a stimulus of some kind. And and and, and I think that what we're going to see is the Trump tax cut stimulus plan, as opposed to the Obama spending stimulus plan. I think will produce better results. The Obama plan didn't work with all that money we spent up front for those shovel-ready jobs and whatnot. So I, I, I like it. We're, we're, we're for lower taxes. We like it. We'd like to see some spending cuts as part of it. Well, I think on the surface, people are going to say, well, this is great. The um, standard deduction is being doubled. Uh, business taxes being cut from corporates from 35 to 15 percent. The problem is there's the deficit. It looks like the deficit is going to probably explode under this plan. The other thing is the plan really lacks details at this point. Ah, there's just one a, cheater. There's an outline, yeah. but there's no plan. And let me go back to Walter Mondale showing my age. As he once said, where's the beef? He has to put something in the plan. All he's doing is throwing out an idea now, which he's done in the whole campaign when he was running for president. But right now, there's nothing on this. So we're saying all this great things. But we have to see the final result. And that's not going to come to August or next fall. So yeah. let's, let's talk about the culture of this. Because this is a, you're a fiscal conservative, and you're the guy that figures out the pulse of the people. Um, you know, I, I, I was listening to uh, some pundits yesterday. I don't know where, actually, even on Fox, who were, uh, and I say even on Fox, because you don't necessarily get a Trump criticism on, on, on that particular channel. The, the notion is is that people, for the most part, tune out specifics when it comes to Donald Trump. True. They just kind of tune out specifics. And so this is a, a unique combination of the two concepts. There are specific tax cuts that have been offered, but the specifics aren't behind the specifics. Uh, is this something that America will start making Donald Trump feel better about? In other words, will this poll well, or are the American people really too smart to get sucked in for a one-page presentation at this point? I think they're too smart at this point. They're going to want to see more to this. I think on the surface, somebody who's making, say, $50,000, and now it's $24,000 in deductions right off the bat, and they're only paying taxes on $26,000, will be happy at first. But they want to see what's all the nuts and bolts of this plan. And as I said, that's never going to come out to way down the road. I generally agree, except except this one pager is by design. It's not like he's, right. you know, I mean, it, that's the first step. You provide an outline, and then you fill in as you go. So let's not say that he's not doing something he's supposed to be doing. This is the way the process works. You float an idea, you float an outline, you get some feedback, and, and you add the specifics, as, as Joe mentioned, you move along. But, yeah, the, yeah, but the, well, ultimately, the, well, the people yeah, 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 need well, the details. Yeah, but the thing is, is that you may offer an outline, right. but there's diligence that support the outline. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and my guest last night, uh, John Friedman, the economist, was suggesting that no reasonable economist, left or right, has been able to, other than a few exceptions, uh, the Larry Kudlow's of the world, who are saying, hey, in my gut, I feel like this is going to work, mm -hmm. would suggest that this thing makes any economic sense from a deficit protective point of view that even repatriation of money will get you maybe you know 20 percent of what is the projected non-paid for deficit here and to your point there's not a doggone spending cut that's been identified well, on another right. one cheater to make this work well as i mentioned we would like to see that i expect that will be coming i mean we know there's cuts he's been cutting some of the cabinet agencies we know there have been already cuts along they just haven't put it all together on the one plan so i don't see anything sinister here i think this is just part of the process um kind of thing but i think the cuts they've made have been small compared to the increases yes. when you increase the defense budget by 10 percent you make these small cuts in epa and stuff it doesn't add up 
you're still spending more. And I think part of the problem is when it gets to Congress, the tax, you've got the deficit hawks who don't want to see the deficit increase. They're going to get hardball here, and they're not yep. going to want to see yep. some of these things go through. Because the deficit right now, as the experts are saying, is going to explode. Polster confirmed for me that Donald Trump, notwithstanding Russian intervention, blah, 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 yep. won with middle America that was dissatisfied with the current lot in life, correct? Absolutely agree. And so is there enough in this, you think, to satisfy the middle American feel like they're just not getting theirs? I'm not sure yet because we haven't seen all the details. Yep. But the thing is, let's look at Donald Trump's first 100 days. He has a job rating of about 41% to 53 disapproved. That's the lowest of any president in a long time. Obama had 68%. Uh, George W. Bush had 56%, which means both of those presidents expanded their base from when they were elected. Donald Trump has not expanded his base in those 100 days. That's not a good sign for Donald Trump, I believe. He's keeping his base, but he's not growing. Where the past presidents have always grown, Donald Trump is not. The Obamacare thing and the failure of that help or hurt? It hasn't done anything to Donald Trump. His base is still with him. Those people who are against him are still dissatisfied with him. Yet there's, there's more um, good feeling in the polling data about the current Obamacare system with this right. with this turbulence that occurred. Right, because they're afraid what they're going to get. At least now they know what they have. They're afraid of what might come. Reflection on that? Well, I think it's too early to judge the tax plan or to judge Trump. Uh, you know, the media, listen, you're, you've been part of it in a sense. The media has been just pounding this guy at a national level. So, of course, his poll numbers aren't going to go up. He hasn't got through his big signature plans yet. So I agree that's that's probably suppressing. But those, you know, health care could be coming very soon. You've, now we've got our first look at a tax plan. Um, I, I forget what else you just mentioned. You know, more, more will be coming. So, so I think it's way too early to make any judgments on that or to look, at, look ahead to future elections or anything like that. It's just, you know, this, you have to give these things time. Congress is tough. Politics is tough. Uh, Trump's a bull in a china shop. We don't know what the outcome's going to be yet. But, Mike, would you agree Donald Trump has caused some of his own problems? Absolutely. Okay. Mm. I mean, he's made the media go after him by what he's saying. He says one thing, then does another. Yeah, so but, the media but, is but, calling but, him But on. we also know that when he does something positive, the media immediately puts a negative spin on it as well. So he's he's been pounded more than he deserves. I'll put, he deserves some. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll give you that. Much. I don't know why you keep talking about the media is just like one entity. The, the, the media. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand uh, that 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 suggestion. Um, I, I, it's it's a whole nother. Well, still, uh, I think more people watch the major major networks. Um, you know, and and two of the three cable mm -hmm. shows are relentless. You know, so five out of the six major news networks are. are well, it's true that he. That's that's what I. It's true that he made some hundred day. It's true that he made some hundred day promises. Right. It is yep. true that he promised like world record, my yep. word, performance right. in the first yep. one hundred days. Other than a judgeship, what has he delivered on the hundred day promises, both pre and post election? What media outlet is going to spin that the wrong direction? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I look at he's, he's on the Keystone Pipeline. He's unraveled some of the Obama limits on cold oil, natural gas. Yep. But other things, his tax overhaul just came out. He was saying he's going to designate China a currency manipulator. Now he's saying a no. Uh, and it only Muslim, took a half hour meeting for that to turn <laughs> right. around. The Muslim ban's been stopped and caught. The wall at Mexico is going to get started in the first 100 days. Nothing's being done. And he's pulling that pulling out of the current, out. Uh, you know, keeping the, the government open this weekend. Because I think what's happening is he's realizing this is not a business anymore. This is government. You can't just say, I want to do this, I want to do that, and it gets done. Hmm. He's realizing you've got to pull things back and take time to get them done. But there's been a lot of things that he has not got done, but a few things he has. Well, there are a lot well, of I'd say there's a lot of things he's got done. I'm a conservative. I'm thrilled with what I'm seeing. The big headline items haven't got done, but he is dismantling the federal government's influence over the states with all these executive orders today or yesterday they talked about this week the uh, dismantling of education mandates over states a dismantling maybe or review of all this monument designated land that the government's been gobbling up and especially in the western states the mm -hmm. energy restrictions you know i mean just he is dismantling the oppressive Washington, D.C. government, maybe not in the headline ways like the wall or like the you know, Obamacare or anything else, but I am thrilled with all the little things I that, am saying. That's where I agree. He is doing those things, and that makes his base very happy. Yep. But it doesn't expand his base, and that's why he's at 41% of the polls. Fair enough. He has not been able to expand the base. It's so funny. I love listening to, <laughs> to you guys speak, and especially you, Joe, because <laughs> ev everything comes back to 
electability, reelectability. You don't think he's running for re-election already? Of course he is. <laughs> and there's another guy that's doing it too. He's running the city of Providence. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. Providence is all in for youth and education. We are making progress, we are building momentum, and mark my words, by working together, we will indeed create the best urban education district in the entire country. That's great. You know, hey, listen, what's he supposed to say? We, we stink? You know, we're stinking the joint out, we're not making any progress, and gosh, I have no idea when we're going to get our act together. You're never going to hear that. The Ed Commissioner uh, will be here next Wednesday to kind of talk about that and more. But Jorge Alorza is in a really interesting spot right now. I have never seen, Joe, you may have a thought on this, I've never seen a guy exclusively tilling his reelection base with everything he does. It's almost as if, if it's not immigration and it doesn't have a touch of immigration in it, it ain't going to get done. There's no question he's playing to his base. No question at all. He's really trying to build up the minority community. If, if I remember correctly last time, Buddy CNC did pretty well in that community. So I think uh, the mayor's trying to really expand himself there to put himself in a very strong position for re-election by doing all these things. It's sanctuary city defense. You know, I have no, I don't know if you have a point of view on this, Mike. Sure. Uh, the, the sanctuary city debate in America right now, and even the Ninth Circuit, we have another district court judge who mm -hmm. said, you know what, You're, you can't penalize Donald Trump, you can't penalize Providence, San Francisco, or anybody else uh, for uh, non-subject matter funding. In other words, if there's something germane, as a funding mechanism germane to activity, that might be constitutionally palatable, mm -hmm. but you can't take away, for instance, highway funds or bridge money or school money for that uh, because you're not shipping undocumented people to ICE. Judge stopped that. Um, but there's a way around that. Meaning? So the way that when, you, when they get the grant, it doesn't say that. But in the future, what I'm hearing is when these federal grants, it is going to say in order to get these grants, you must, the strings, you must comply with this, this, and this. Right now, those grants don't say those things. In the future, they will, and that's how it's kind of, right now, they, they well, can't, they can't enforce Well, that'll be constitutionally yeah. tested as well. Well, uh, no, uh, no, I don't think so. Well, well, for, for what? Forever. In order to be able to get, funds in order strings to be, attached. Right. Well, in order to be forever. able to, yeah. but, but, but the strings are always attached to the subject matter. That's what I mean, and it will be the subject matter. So if you want fed, you know, law enforcement funds, you're going to have to comply with federal law but enforcement. But you can't take provision. school funds or, no, or, or no, infrastructure funds no. or anything along that line. But it will be specific. Uh, that's an interesting battle, but the truth is, is that I, this whole sanctuary discussion has got everybody polably up in arms, yes. correct? But if you really just kind of peer through some of it, there's a lot more hype of controversy than there is common sense controversy, seems to me. That the city of Providence, does, if, you, if Joe, you're an undocumented immigrant uh, and we pull you over at a stop sign mm -hmm. uh, because you blew through it, but you've got no other, you know, serious, uh, right. you know, violent stuff. We're not calling ICE about you. Correct. But Donald Trump's plan doesn't call for, for, for that yet, at least. Right. In other words, there's a whole lot of right. angst right. over yeah. stuff that if right. you just pair through, this, this he, should be more calm. He wants the criminals, which is the same thing Obama was doing. Exactly. And yet, yet Alorza is screaming bloody murder about immigration and this and that, and he's actually got people fueled over a Trumpian position that really doesn't exist either. So to take that to the next logical step, this, this is what bothers me about, about what we're seeing in the state and especially in Providence is, is that politically they're spending so much time on such an issue that is of, as you, I don't want to say trivial importance, of course it's important to those families, but, but doesn't deserve that kind of bandwidth. You know, I would like to see the mayor and, and our state politicians focus more on the working families, you know, the people that are making this state go, the small business owners, and it's all these politically correct media hyped special interest but, groups that seem to get all the political bandwidth, but, and I think that's misguided. But in Providence, it is important because a lot be of good the for people, voters, right? But <laughs> right. also, a lot of people are concerned about that. If you're in another city in Rhode Island, that that won't even be brought up because that's not an issue there. But in Providence, it is. Central Falls, it would be. Now, in this, you know? this you know, again, we this program is being recorded uh, early afternoon yesterday, Thursday. Uh, Last night at 5.30, meaning, well, four hours from where we are, but last <laughs> night for you, uh, the Community Safety Act in Providence was being revisited for a second vote. This is unbelievable. 
This is, you, you've got folks here who have, you know, expletive the police dispositions who are driving some of the agenda here. I would think that most reasonable people don't want to see profiling. No. Correct? People You're pulling not. data. I agree. People they, don't, they don't want to see, see profiling. profiling. No. They want to see people treated with respect and with equity Correct. on the community. But the lack of uh, organic discussion between legitimate concerned members of the community and the rank and file of the police department is so wantonly obvious here. This Community Safety Act is again another how do I get reelected type of thing, both for the council in their wards and the mayor, is it not? I'm, I haven't really followed that close, so I can't answer it fully, but I would think if they all work together from the beginning, you probably could have come up with something that everyone would, would have been happy with. Right now, the police are not happy with it, I know that. You know, this this was news months ago, but I but I hold it in my hand again. This this is a copy of the letter from the Providence Police Chief uh, uh, Stephen Parry to his officers saying you will not enforce these ordinances anymore. And, and so when you arbitrarily discard the rule of law, you create this kind of controversy. If if you have a law, follow. If you want, don't want to enforce the law, change the law. But what we see here is this: we don't care what the law says attitude anymore. So you supply it with another law that then has no force of law in the courts, but really it becomes it's a super policy that you create as an ordinance. It's a I don't. And then when you have f courts not forcing, you know, we're, we're we're turning into anarchy. You know, we're really turning into little mini dictatorships I cannot argue around with you here, and, and, it, and we must enforce the laws that are on the book. All right, when we come back. Some statewide issues: his wheelhouse, taxation. Stay with us. Dan, as much as I'd like to say, and I think it's good that we do look at our neighbors, I think we do need to be competitive and we do beat our neighbors when it comes to corporate tax and a lot of different things. We're not Massachusetts. We don't have that high-tech engine called the 128 corridor that's generating high-tech jobs and everything else. We need to look at this thing in much more detailed, much more uh, thoughtful way than to say we need to just whatever Massachusetts do and do it better. That was an argument, a uh, friendly one, that I had with the majority leader, Joseph Carchi, last week where we were talking about the sales tax proposal. Uh, Representative Jared Nunes was here as well talking about a study, a bill to create a study commission to drop the sales tax from 7 to 3%. And I'm thinking, well, that's my buddy Mike's program. You ripped him off there, and you like being ripped off on, on those concepts. We put our work out for public consumption and legislative consumption. I Absolutely. was saying to Sakarchi, yeah. why can't we just get into a program where we're less than our competitors on every negative uh, tax implication and better than our neighbors on every positive cash flow. And that's what he was saying. Oh, no, it's hard to figure out. By the way, he co-sponsored this bill without much thought, which is the way it goes in the General Assembly. <laughs> uh, sales tax reductions, your, give me the 30-second rationale for a 7 to 3%. All right, well, I want to thank Rep. Nader Lillo for actually putting in the bill to drop it from 7 to 3%. So that's without a study, and in. the Noons put one in to study it. What's the difference? Well, it was based on our research, right, right? Rep. Nader Lillo. Right. The, 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 listen, there's some momentum going here. You know, think of the narrative very quickly. Four years ago when we came up with this, we had a governor, a speaker, didn't want to hear anything about it, didn't want to hear anything about letting people keep more of their money. Now we seem to have a speaker who's open to it. Back then, we also passed a liquor tax, sales tax repeal. Remember to give parity with Massachusetts. A recent study we put out this week shows that that industry increased by 21.4% in the two years after this. It makes a difference. So we now have proof that it works in a major industry. In fact, we're projecting with the sales tax, it's 21.3%. Now we have a commission supported by a ma the majority leader. And the question isn't, should we? do a sales tax like the last commission we had, it's how would we do it? And then when we come out of that, we're going to say, okay, the first commission, how, how do we feel about the projections? The second commission's now going to say, are we comfortable with how we would get there? And then I think by this time next year, we might be looking at a real something. What do the people want? Well, obviously, anyone who says they're going to cut taxes, people are happy with it. In the last Bryant um, Hassenfeld poll that we did, we asked the people, of these four choices, which tax would you like to see cut first? And it was the income tax. The state income tax was first. Yeah. The car tax was second. To be honest with you, I was surprised. I thought the car tax would be first. Sales tax was third, and business taxes was fourth. They weren't, it wasn't like income tax like 50%, but it was higher than all the others. Yeah, speaking of the car tax, I mean, this is, the Hassenfeld poll actually made the governor uh, all of flitter because right. she actually pulled 20 points higher Correct. with her 30% reduction in value right. and thus reducing <laughs> the, the car tax versus the speaker right. who wants to eliminate it over five years. That must have gone up his wazoo sideways. The, the bottom line is 
her proposal was like fifty million dollars. His was two hundred and fifteen million. We put both price tags in the question. You asked the governor question first, though. Do you think yes. that impacted? Uh, well, I think if we asked the other one first, it would have really impacted it. By asking the governors first, I think you're better off. But I think people when they saw the price tag of two hundred fifteen million dollars a year, that made them nervous. Not that they don't want to pay no contacts, but it's how much it's going to cost the state. You know, I, I, I'm not surprised by that poll um, because you, you think of it. The, the car tax, you get a bill, right. two, f 200 500 800 dollars. The income tax, you see it on your pay stub. Every sales tax, you don't see. You right. don't feel it's a stealth tax. But you know what? We pay five times as much in sales tax as we do in car tax as a state. You know, over a billion dollars compared mm -hmm. to a couple hundred million dollars. So the sales tax, you don't feel it or despise it right. as much because it's just a part of everyday life. But when you see that on a bill, yeah, I correct. think I think that's why that polls differently. Well, which is going to win? <laughs> there seems to be a momentum for tax reduction. Yeah, that's a good thing. That makes you excited. Yeah. Uh, I'm not arguing about it. Uh, of course, you got to pay for these things much more acutely in state government than you do in federal government. Because the federal government just rolled deficits, and no, the, there's no super government right. that says to the federal government you can't do that. But we have a law that says you got to balance right. the books. I would. I think the revenue conference is May 10th this year. I think that's going to tell them how much money they have to the play projections with. are down 30 they million down, dollars. Uh, I think they're up, but they're down. If you know what I mean, they're, they're higher than they expected originally, but they're lower than they expected now. If that makes any sense well, to Well, they got excited right. about yeah. it. Right, yeah, exactly. They raised yeah. their... Yeah. So, I mean, they're going to make some tough decisions on what programs they actually want to put through this coming year. Uh, real quick, a couple of big issues. You've got uh, a professional conflict, so yes. we can't talk about McCoy Stadium becoming Park in Pawtucket. Are you, are you guys taking a position well, I'm going to separate my. Our center takes a position. We we don't believe Rhode Island's in the, in the state to hand out corporate welfare. Personally, I believe. Okay, personally, and I think I've heard you say something similar. These knee-jerk reactions, either for or against, are. We've got a. This is a serious issue. Having the Pawtucket Red Sox here is important for our state psyche. Listen, I think we are a big league state, and I think that big league state deserves a minor league team. And I think we've got to take a hard look, a real look at this. I, I'm hearing that the plan is not going to have a lot of giveaways and things like that. that it's there going to is be a, a plan. bond that's going to have to have major equity. It's got to be a simple formula. Yeah. And, and I think we've got to take an honest, fair look at it okay. rather than all these knee-jerk reactions right. we're hearing. I think that's fair analysis. Chafee burping up, coming back <laughs> into the fold. Joe, tell me it's not. Tell me, <laughs> tell me there's not a number that would support his idea. No, I, I've seen some private numbers. The numbers don't show that Lincoln Chafee is going to be someone who's going to be very viable in a campaign. If he decides to run for governor or run as an independent, and I'm Alan Fung, I'm thrilled. Because the votes Lincoln Chafee does get is from Democrats. So that would be help Alan Fung in a three-way race for governor if Chafee ran as independent. Could he screw it up in a four-way race? No, I don't think Chafee is that strong at this point. I think he's fairly weak. I don't think his numbers have really improved much since he's left the governorship. Don't you think Link ought to just teach? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I think he's had his day, both in the Senate and, and the mayor and, and, right. and in the State House, yeah. I think we covered it all. That was a fast half hour, guys. Thank you. I'll tell you what's up next week when we come back. Don't go away. All right, hey, listen, next week, again, the Ed Commissioner will join us on Wednesday. That's a big appointment, so I hope you make an appointment for that program. Of course, we'll catch up on the weekend's events on Monday, and we'll be back on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Thanks for watching. Good night.